can you imagine Sony lenses that are actually easy to use for one-man band filming crew? Can you imagine Sony lenses that are auto-focusing and are small? Well, you don't need to imagine anymore. A Samyang, also known as Rockingham, South Korean lens manufacturer, are first to make proper cinema lenses, but breaking some standard rules. These are different, designed for a modern filmmaker in mind, someone who wants and needs the autofocus and someone who doesn't need to show to everyone around, look how big my lens is. So to find out more about these funky cine lenses, keep watching, don't skip, and I'll tell you more about them. Until now, cinema lenses were big, heavy, and fully manual. This is Samyang's new lineup changes that, but before I'll tell you more about them, I need to explain some things. A cine lens, also known as a cinema lens, is a lens specifically designed for use in film and video production. Cine lenses differ from still photography lenses in a number of ways. One of the main differences is the way the cine lenses are marked. While still photography lenses are usually marked with their focal length and maximum aperture, which is not actually an accurate measurement, uh, no two f1.8 lenses will be exactly the same. Sony lenses are marked with their focal length and T-stop. T-stop is a measure of the actual amount of light the lens allows to pass through it, taking into account any light loss due to the lens design and construction. This makes it easier for videographers to accurately set exposure and maintain consistent exposure between shots and between lenses. It means that T1.9 lens will be equally bright as another T1.9 lens, but also lenses from the same brands will match the optical quality, delivering consistent results in different focal lengths. Sony lenses are also usually marked with distance markers as well. These Samyang lenses have got no markings at all. They are small and most importantly they do auto focus on Sony cameras. You could say that they are basically photo lenses modified for filming but there are a few important video specific features here. They all do share T1.9 aperture and absolutely 100% matching color and contrast rendition. There's three of them available right now 24, 35 and 75 millimeter I am filming with now and 45 and 20 millimeter coming later this year. They all share the same size and weight which makes them a perfect choice not only for a gimbal work but also for using on a camera mounted on the drone. I really like the optical quality they deliver. As I said before they look they produce is identical so if you need to change lenses during the shoot you know that you're gonna get a consistent look throughout. What I really like about them is that the image they produce has got character. They are not clinical and perfect. You get that very often with majority of mainstream lenses these days producing same and safe images. These lenses are that something special, a little bit like vintage lenses. This is the most visible in how the blurred parts of the image look, the bokeh. A little vintage-like and the look that can only add or make it easier to capture or create that elusive cinematic look. A lot of purists, old school purists, would argue that you don't need autofocus on a cine lens. That all the proper movies and TV shows are shot only with manual lenses. But if you are on your own filming, can you do that with manual lens easily? I can't. The autofocus gives you the peace of mind as you don't have to worry about dialing the focus point correctly every time. Also makes it possible to film with multiple cameras on your own. It makes it possible to film yourself with zero hassle, but also makes run and gun type of shooting quicker and focusing more accurate most of the time. I have used this set, uh, them all on a7 IV and a7S III, and the autofocus works very well. 24 and 35 are pretty much flawless, even wide open at T1.9, but 75 has occasional wobble and can't get the focus or focuses or loses the focus sometimes. It might be due to the shallower depth of field or maybe it's just me, user error. Whatever it is, I have noticed occasionally, but I would not call it a problem. I don't mind shooting with manual lenses when I am filming with a static camera and a static subject but I do like when I can create more adventurous shots and add movement to, to my camera work without worrying about the focus at all. This set of lenses allows me to be more creative while filming. What's really great about them is that if you are a hybrid shooter like me and you also very often shoot photos at the same time, these allow you to do that. They perform great on a hybrid camera like a7 IV as photo lenses as well. You get a cine lens and a photo lens in one. If I shoot with manual cine lens, I have to change a lens to take some quick 
photos during a shoot as they are not practical to shoot photos with. These feel just like ordinary photo lenses. Sharpness is very good. This is a proper modern sharpness worth of any modern prime. Chromatic aberration is almost invisible, way below average for wide aperture lenses. Flaring is seriously under control too. Unfortunately, there is some focused breathing visible. This is when the video looks like it is slightly zooming in or out when you change the focal plane. This is certainly better than with most of photo-specific lenses, but it's not something that filmmakers want to see in their footage, that breathing. Is it a deal breaker? Maybe for some, yes, but in reality, if you don't want any focused breathing, you pay three or four times or more than what these cost. Built, same size, same weight, each weighing 280 grams. This is important when you shoot with a gimbal. You only have to balance it once and you be able to change the lenses without the need of rebalancing it every time. Autofocus is cool and very often practical, but there will always be times when you have to manually focus and all lenses in the set come with the gears for follow focus built in. Maybe not your standard cine lens big gears, but they are certainly good enough to work with any standard follow focus system. Them. These lenses have got no hard stops when you're focusing, but the manual focus responsiveness is linear. In short, the focus changes are not affected by the speed or velocity like with all photo lenses with focus by wire system. You could mark focus point A and B on the follow focus system and do consistent focus pulls with these each time. There's no distance markers either, but I think these lenses are made for autofocusing with occasional manual focus operation, and they are designed with a new breed of filmmakers in mind. Those who don't have previous experience with classic manual cine lenses and who want familiarity and convenience of a photo lens, but with consistency and optics of a cine lens. These deliver on all fronts. The front is a bit different than your standard lens too. The filter thread or 58 millimeter is in the middle, but that is surrounded by a mount for additional accessories, one with electronic contact. I was told last year that there will be some kind of anamorphic adapter coming out for these in the near future, but I have no more information than that right now. Whatever it is, it's going to be good. There's no other Cine lens brand doing anything like this electronically connected accessory mount at the front of the lens. Hard to miss are the two built-in tally lamps, one at the front and one on the side of the lens. These are lit green when you switch the camera on and turn red when you start recording. This is something that is missing from most of cameras, especially hybrid cameras, and something that a lot of people who film themselves absolutely love. That little indicator to tell you that you are in fact have pressed that record button. There's one single switch and that's M1, M2 mode switch. There's no standard auto manual uh, focus switch, just this. By default, straight out of the box, this switches between manual focus and aperture options. So basically when your camera is in auto focusing uh, mode, the ring does nothing standard. Switch the camera to manual focus via the camera and the ring does manual focusing. Switch it over to M2 mode and the focus ring becomes manual aperture. I love that as when you auto focus with these lenses, you can control the aperture with the standard follow focus at the same time smoothly. Very neat. There's also a focus hold button. Need to mention that also in addition to the linear focus feel of the focus ring, it has a 300 degree throw. This and the M1 and M2 switch functions can be modified via additional Samyang lens dock. Over really well built, all metal and hard plastic made to last construction. Small, light and also weather sealed. It would be nice if they made the lens caps uh, with big focal length numbers printed on them or just simply added cheap stickers to stick on the, on the back lens caps with the focal length on them so you could see which lens is which when they store in a, in a case or a bag as they all are identical. Price, value for money. The prices for these lenses are between 530 and 550 pounds or 650 dollars and 700 dollars each. Maybe not very cheap, but these are 
auto-focusing weather sealed small cine lenses with tally lamps and future-proofed for electronically front connected accessories lenses that can deliver really good quality results and still cheaper than most of equivalent focal length photo primes the fact that there is no lenses like these on the market right now lenses that are in fact cine lenses with autofocus and all same size and weight makes them very good value for money quality to deliver regardless if you auto manually focus is on par with with lenses that cost double or more. Conclusion, these Samyang VAF lenses are a great option for photographers and videographers who are looking for high quality, versatile and affordable lenses. They offer excellent build quality, optical performance and compatibility and are great value for money. These are cine lenses that surely are not for everyone. If you use old school, chunky, manual cine lenses successfully and they fit perfectly into your workflow, your rig and the way you operate, then these will not be for you. But if you are new to cine lenses or you simply want smaller, lighter and most importantly, auto-focusing lenses, then these could be the only cine lenses for you. This is what you call progress. Samyang gave us not only great quality optics here, but innovative and original design and concept. I don't know why all the major brands which already do cine lenses and photo lenses are not making lenses like these. I literally could do all my professional video work with just these three lenses. Very highly recommended. And this is it from me. If this video was informative or at least entertaining, please give me the thumbs up, follow me on Instagram and please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. But if you are on a on but if you are on your own filming you can do that. You can can you do that? Autofocus is cool and very often practical but these ay 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 mistake 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 this and the M1 M2 switch functions can be modified via the additional Samyang lens dock. I'm a f you little bird.